Alright guys, time to go back again today. Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far and welcome back to what may well continue to be a pretty entertaining week of Call of Duty action. Certainly a lot of these pro teams towards the bottom of the pack. Not really too much to play for at this point in terms of World Championship qualification and talking about going rogue in pretty dramatic fashion. Breaking the gentleman's agreements, putting that behind them and well, certainly that was happening yesterday in the Paris match and maybe will happen in the coming days as well. Very much intrigued to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Like if you guys enjoyed the video, subscribe if you were new as always. I greatly appreciate it. I'm really up to the channel. Thank you very much indeed for doing that. First First of all, this was Scum, as he says yesterday, super proud of the squad, securing, of course, Optic Chicago, the number one seeds in that Group A for the Major. I know it doesn't mean much because league matches, whatever, whatever, but we've been grinding and trying to improve in games. We know our potential. I feel we've been hitting that potential in matches. Finally, just got to keep at it. Hashtag brick by brick. Certainly seems to be that Scum and Envoy is like an SMG duo are playing, um, a, a, well, a, a much better style now, playing a lot more together, hitting things more aggressively, kind of about what Sim and Abizia are doing for FaZe. And then, well, Tottenham has been kind of one of the turnaround points, I think, for Optic to become a natural championship contender, it seems, at this point. And, of course, well, they're going to be the number one seed at the Major, as we did discuss yesterday. There was a little bit of drama after the flank, I'm pretty sure, last night, because one of the mods in there, Joel, he tweeted out, Optic is trash, but a little bit more harshly, that, let's say, than that. And this comes as, like, come on, man, I don't care if you don't like us. You're a moderator in a high-profile stream. Keep your personal opinion out of it. It's just common decency not to be biased when you hold some authority in the stream. I would say professionalism, but it isn't really a job, so I don't even know, says Scuff. So, pretty entertaining stuff, nonetheless. But there was also some pretty entertaining stuff going on yesterday and potentially in the coming days as well. First of all, I thought this is interesting from Co Complex right here. Search and destroy percentage of kills by weapon per map. So you can see on Miami, it's like, um, I mean, like, yeah, 70%-ish kills are always like, well, are crew players. Whereas on Express, it's more like 55, 60% to an SMG player. So kind of interesting to see, right? I mean, as he says, like, raid here, standoff, pretty much 50-50. Moscow, slightly more SMGs than uh, assault rifles, maybe um, slightly less than you might expect given a lot of close quarter combat, to be honest, on that map. So pretty interesting interesting to see nonetheless. This is also from a team yesterday right on the subliner side of things. Team Captain, IGL, Shot Caller, Bomb Carrier, Engineer, Shot Caller again, Ratman, Entry, OBJ, SMG, a team, hashtag Mr. Do It All Right, because of course with Clayson now no longer with the team, he has to well, step up into these other responsibilities. And to be fair, like yesterday's series, it was Hydra who was uh, dominating in terms of the slang category and Mac turning up towards the end, but I'm sure a team is doing so much for this team right now and is such a valuable player to their team. So if they can continue to improve and maybe make a run who knows? I just don't think their ceiling is ever going to be as high as it was with Clayster, to be honest. But um, it's tough to say, right, if they have a good result here. Of course, they play FaZe on Sunday, I'm pretty sure, this week. So not going to be easy by any means. Of course, we'll look at the matches for later today in a couple of minutes' time. So yesterday, Paris played up against the subliners, of course. And uh, well, there were a fair few gentlemen's agreements being broken, it seems. So first of all, the Slinky 74U. You guys might know, like, it's the 74U with the weird, um, well, as he, well, as he says, a Slinky, right? It looks like the little coil that goes across the top. It's kind of a jacket or whatever. But uh, this is gentleman's agreement. It. I'm pretty sure General said recently on the, one of the Optic pre-shows that um, the fact that of the, well, the reason why it's GA, it's not actually GA'd in challenges. Everyone can use it over there. But I think it has less visual recoil, even though the actual recoil of the gun I think is the same. But it looks like it recoils less than a normal AK-74U. So um, that's probably where you see it all the time in League Player. At least I keep running into it all the time. I don't actually have the thing. But uh, still, Zapti has bought it. But um, he thought it was allowed. But it's actually GA. Bought it for no reason. I'm not exactly sure if he whipped it out for a little, well, a couple of seconds here. But uh, he eventually did indeed put it away. But uh, there were certainly some other gentlemen's agreements being broken, as Temp is going to describe to quite some comedic effect here in a second. We talked yesterday about the fact that Aqua had the, uh, well, the artillery. He decided to split the artillery right. And I'm not exactly sure if he fully did this, but, well, it does seem like indeed he did, because what Temp is saying right here, he effectively said, look, I'm just going to scum back these guys and go completely rogue. And uh, well, if they're doing this for artillery and these types of GAs, it's only one step away from starting to break some other gentlemen's agreements as well. And you do have to think, with some of these lower tier squads that are in these um, games that really don't matter too much. What is, well, what is uh, you know, hurting them from actually pulling out something pretty entertaining and giving us a show as fans? The fact of the matter is, we've got Los Angeles Grillers versus Seattle Surge in a couple of days' time. I'm not sure that's going to be the most exciting match in the world. So if we can potentially get some, you know, XM4s come into play, some gentlemen's agreements get broken, then it will, all of a sudden we're looking at a pretty entertaining match up on our hands, which, um, well, could be a good show for fans, to be honest. And, well, if the pros agree, okay, let's just, you know, chalk it off for this series, then there's probably not going to be any long-term repercussions for them with, you know, Blacklist and all this type of stuff that uh, players like to talk about. So I'll share this clip that came up from the flag last night, which is absolutely hilarious, to be honest. Which is, uh, well, Temp, well, Temp discussing the whole situation right now with the gentleman's agreements. Initially talking about, okay, I wasn't exactly aware of that. And he goes on to describe exactly what Acura was thinking when he was going to split the artillery, which is effectively where you call in a couple of them and then you save one and then you call it in a little bit later, which is uh, GH by the pros because it's deemed to be a little bit too strong. Oh, oh okay, I remember now. Okay, okay. Uh, so <laughs> 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 Are you gonna pass up? I 
actually didn't remember. Oh, God. Okay. Oh, okay. God, right. I didn't remember. All right. Now I remember now. It takes oh, a bigger man. It takes a bigger man to admit when they're wrong. I appreciate that. I didn't know. I didn't know. No, no, and then the streaks. And then the streaks from and then the streaks from Yuli too. Are, uh, he he used two of his missiles and then waited ten <laughs> seconds and then used it another missile. I thought that was comedy. Nah, that's us just like no one can say. Why? That's the end. You want to hear why? You want to hear why? No one can see. You gotta think, Tom. You gotta think, Harry. Some the GAs don't. They don't give a. The binner, can I say something? No, no, I want, I want you to go. I want you to respond. No, to I was gonna say, they, no one can say about that to us because, like, I, when that happened, you leave and say, said, bro, I'm scumbagging them. <laughs> <laughs> we just went, we just went, bro, like, like, bro, we're in last, like, we're in last, like, last, like, we're in last, like you're lucky we don't cheat even harder, bro. Like, I'm gonna be honest, bro. Like, so, this is pretty much what everyone's hoping for. As you can see, it goes in the chat right here, the poll in the chat last night. Should Paris go rogue versus London in a couple of days' time? Yes, break all the GAs. 96% of people seem to be down with this idea and as Zaptia says here I'm a player of course a former player for the Royal Ravens KSP and Stimshot is coming out in full force. The KSP is something which you will run into in league play on from time to time. I'm pretty sure it got better like in a relatively recent patch update a couple of months ago now and um, well I'm pretty sure it got GA'd by the pros. Stimshot is another option. We've also got things like the XM4 right that's been GA'd and some other things that pros could use. I'm pretty sure like generally in challenges because in challenges North America there's some things that aren't GA'd that the pros have like um all these weird sites. You guys I remember like it was a Chandler's Cup not too long ago people started bringing out like thermals and stuff on their XM4 like it was absolute chaos to be honest because um I think it was like a, who was it uh, well who's it Spark probably I think he wanted to use the QBZ or something and um they just decided to break all the GAs for a few hours as a result so maybe we see something crazy like that happen it's uh, well somewhat tough to say but exactly for a match like this for example Los Angeles Grillers versus uh, Seattle Surge and to be fair there's a pretty cool post that they do right here it's actually pretty cool like the big one who got the Grillers versus the Surge on this side 54 combined years of experience between Apple the and uh, Nikki D, but at the end of the day, who really wants to watch this game if there's, uh, well, not and something else on the line? For example, if Gentleman's Agreement starts to be broken, as we may in DT. Now, Seattle Surge might be in a pretty difficult spot right now. I mean, um, you know, we saw yesterday they're scrimming against BBG. I think they lost a 3-2 map count. This is one of the maps right here. And it's one of those teams that you're pretty sure is chalked. I mean, 100% is chalked for the end of the season. I'm sure they're already considering other options what players they might potentially sign. But Seattle Surge could maybe help redeem themselves in the fans' eyes if they do what CD I'll meme suggests right here and pulls out the XM4 up against Los Angeles Grillers or even the AK-47. Actually, yeah, yeah, this is a good point from Stack right here. Pretty sure it's actually banned in the CDL right now because they got rid of it from League Play or whatever, um, as did they the LC-10, which has improved the League Play experience pretty dramatically, even though, of course, it's not the very best iteration of League Play that we have seen throughout Call of Duty history. Now, this also interesting as well that I did want to mention because as we were just saying, like Seattle and some of these bottom tier squads, they're pretty, well, I'm pretty sure right now their squad is not going to be the same going into next season, right? So, you saw this tells Zuma that Pred is in talks with the CDL organization. So Pred's of, you know, Renegades down there in the APAC region. He's been um, such a talented player in that region for a couple of seasons now. And, you know, we've seen what guys like Hydra have done, for example, right, coming over from France. Pred is a similar, um, well, a similarly hyped up player, to be honest, from that region. So I think it makes a lot of sense that teams are at least considering to get this guy on their lineup. But, um, well, which team could it be? Zuma effectively says right here, look, one of these one of these squads has already effectively signed him for next season, even though they can't officially sign him yet. So I'm pretty sure when the World Championship is over probably the very next day. The Roster Mania, like, um, well, a period, the frenzy begins, and teams can start signing players pretty much straight away. So maybe they have some sort of like verbal agreement with Pred, like, look, okay, as soon as um as soon as it's open to do so, we're gonna get you in and get you officially signed. Now, of course, this would have to be one of the bottom four teams. Would it be a London? I mean, I'm not exactly sure it would be a London given the way they're organizing their roster right now. Like Afro might be their rookie to build around, and they might be looking to put some other pieces around him. And um, Nasty, for example, might be an intelligent pick. So you've got to think about Paris, Seattle, Los Angeles. Angeles Grillers, these are probably the three most likely teams for a guy like Prez, but um, interesting to hear nonetheless. Uh, but I'll definitely, I, I'm hearing, um, you know, sources, I got my sources, that Prez yeah. is already talking to, to to a franchise team, and, and he's got a spot next year. Oh, well, you heard um, it here first, I guess. Yeah, heard it here first on the flank, that this kid Pred. Uh, be... So you're trying to get, make me look like an idiot, then you already got the intel, he's fucking on a team. Yeah, yeah, I was trying to say it. I just couldn't yeah, no. And speaking of Paris, just before we go on to the series that we're going to be having today, Scrap said this on stream yesterday, but it's literally like a couple of seconds clip with music blurring in the background, so I'll just say what he says. But he eventually says, look, I'm going to be going full-time Warzone next season. And, uh, well, very interesting to hear. I think he's been talking on stream about similar things as of late, right? The fact that, okay, Scraps isn't paying him a biggest... Well, he, the Paris isn't paying Scraps a massive paycheck by any means. on the minimum salary of 50k, or whatever exactly it is, which I'm sure he can make way more, you know, streaming and playing Warzone and stuff like this. And, uh, 
that, well, if there's no opportunities in a pro league team next season that it is going to pay any more than that, then, it, well, he may well indeed consider to decide to retire from Call of Duty and go full-time Warzone. The problem is, of course, with that, that once you've gone down that route, that it's very difficult to return, right, back to back to a competitive Call of Duty because other players will be taken over and practicing more on this type of stuff. So it would be a shame to see Scraps step away, to be honest. I think he's been a great personality and player within the scene these last several years, but it certainly seems to be something that it's on his mind. Let's talk about the series for today, then. These are the CDL games, of course, as you can see. We've got the Legion versus Ravens game that potentially some GAs could get broken there. We've got a phase playing subliners on the Sunday, but today we've got these couple of games. So Ultra play the Mutineers. Now, these are all pretty important games because Ultra versus Mutineers, Ultra are fighting for that second seed, as are the Dallas Empire, and uh, well, Mutineers are really trying to fight for that sixth seed. So it's going to be interesting to see. Can Mutineers put up too much of a fight against Ultra here? Will Ultra just come out and, well, demolish them or at least get the job done in a pretty convincing fashion? And then Seattle Surge, right? Another team that potentially maybe GAs won't come out in this series, but who knows, right? Maybe they decide to go rogue with a little bit of things just so, well, how Aqua and the Paris Legion guys were yesterday not seeming to care too much anymore. And Empire also in a pretty similar spot, right? They're trying to fight for that second seed as well up against the Toronto Ultra and New York Sublin are certainly in the race. And it's even possible, I think, for Optic to still nab the second seed for Champs as well if everything goes their way towards the end of the season. But just a little bit of throwback here to finish off the video. They said, well, nice little 1v3 that uh, Zero has a few years ago back at CWL Miami, which is, um, yeah, Black Ops 4. Certainly watching it like this does make you miss this game to some great degree. But very much intrigued to get your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, I'd greatly appreciate a like on the video. Really helps out the YouTube channel. You enjoyed this content. A lot of people like you may enjoy this content as well. And I'm growing the competitive Call of Duty community. Thank you for watching as always. Take care. And I we'll see you next time. Uh, and that's tough because you really didn't want face to take those fights. Zero set up a very big flank in natural fact from a 1v3 to a 1v1. Major Maniac. Zero. This could be a massive, massive momentum boost not only for Zero individually, but FaZe Clan as well. 40 seconds on the clock. Of course, FaZe are on the attack. You can see, unfortunately for Zero, he's going to have to get bombed. But timing goes his way. Major Maniac spots him. Zero hasn't opted to heal. Now he will. It's going around the Lambo. Zero, a 1v3 clutch in round one.